This podcast is brought to you courtesy of Skype. You're listening to Nordrasil Radio, where gamers rock. You're listening to But Wait, There's Lore, hosted by Pride. I am a god! Only on Nordrasil Radio at nordrasilradio.com. This podcast may contain harsh language. Listener discretion is advised. and gentlemen and welcome once again to another episode of but wait there's lore right here on nordisil radio nordisil radio.com um for you guys listening live you may need to restart your stream as a stream did just drop uh for about half a second there so uh but this is but wait there's lore right here on nordisil radio nordisil radio.com i am jo- i am joined right now by necroxis and dunn how it's will be joining us at the second half of the show, because college and whatnot. I do want to go ahead and say that if you're listening live and with us and not with us here in the IRC, you should be. You can hit up the IRC by going to www.nordrasilradio.com, clicking on the chat button right up there at the top. A Java applet's going to load. All you got to do is type in your name and hit join chat, and you'll be in right in here with all of us. And we're having a ton of fun. Yeah. Are we? I mean, I think I'm in the IRC. But, uh... I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I see your name in the IRC. Oh, okay, I must be in the IRC. I joined yeah. it, like, uh, an hour ago. And then started doing dailies. And now he won't let me log off because I'm in combat, so... I will we'll be back in there shortly, once uh, once I kill this thing. <laughs> Dunn's doing some dailies, I think. But um, if you're not listening live and you're listening on the uh, YouTube archive, or the MP3s, which you can get over at uh, thesmokinggamer.com, uh, and you want to have your answer, or you want to have a question answered, or anything like that, you want to give us a comment, uh, show us some love, or hate on Dunn some more, Oh, God damn. Uh, <laughs> that settled down now. <laughs> you, can, uh, you can email us at lore at omfg.fm. And uh, that should be right there. If you're looking, if you're listening and you're going back to playing WoW, which a lot of people do, they'll, they'll boot up the show. They'll start listening to the show on YouTube. And they'll go, like, start playing WoW, doing some dailies or whatever. If you look at the, the picture, it has uh, the email address right there. So, if you've ever been confused as to what the email address actually is it's always right there on the uh on the little image that plays during the show uh, as well as some really awesome artwork that various people do um let's see the next thing i want to talk about is knightsoflore.com if you are in the middle of the week thinking to yourself that man i wish i had some friends that were into world of warcraft lore so that I could talk about this awesome thing that I found, or this wicked theory I thought of. Well, you can head over to knightsoflore.com, and uh, that's the place just for that. It's a bunch of people that love WoW lore. They come together, talk about theories, talk about things they find, talk about things that you know happened 10,000 years ago during the War of the Ancients. So be sure to check that out. In the meantime, there is one thing, if you guys took a look at the Facebook post that I posted, uh, it does say Pride says goodbye. This will be uh, my last episode of Boethus Lore for some time. Not for all eternity, unless I die. That wouldn't be good. Uh, If I die, done, you get to have my show. Aw, yeah. Uh oh. Um. (laughs) But, but it's it's a fifty-one forty-nine percent split. Necro gets forty-nine percent. You get fifty. What about Howie? Howie Howie gets no percent. He's not here. It doesn't count. 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's not my last show for all eternity. Um, but it is for for a, a good number of weeks. As number one, I am moving, uh, and it's not like a simple move. Uh, like like last time when I moved in with Sarah, it's uh it's a much larger move. It's like a 19 hour drive and all this other stuff. And I gotta get a bunch of stuff taken care of. I got a kid that has to get you know all of his medical stuff cleared up and all that good stuff. So basically, I'm just uh, using the spring time as uh, as a get my life in order time. So. I will be handing over the reins to Rioris, Don, Necro, and Howitzer. And uh, once again, the internets here in the uh, in the household are not not working too well for some reason. So the stream keeps dropping a little bit. If the stream drops, uh, just refresh it. Of course, you guys. Uh, listening to the archive, you don't have to worry about that because, you know, you're listening that, to the that. archive, so you don't have any, you can't not hear what I'm saying as it's all recorded on the, uh, on my PC as it's going on, so you guys should be fine, but, uh, if the stream does, uh, like, cut out for you live listeners, all you have to do, wait, like, a minute or so and then refresh the stream, and it should be back up and working and whatnot. But what um, if the stream goes out for me, and I can't hear you? Well, if the stream goes out for you, then we just, we'll make it work. This is not the first time our show has had technical difficulties done. As you know, I mean, hell, the the season 5 uh, premiere when we had uh, Dave Kosak, the, the damn thing kept, like, cutting him off every 10 seconds. So there's always that. In the meantime, though, we are going to talk about some lore today on my last show. This is going to be the uh, the last little bit of my World of Warcraft timeline, or my Warcraft timeline deal of events that happened before the video games. And Don is going to be talking to us quite a bit about uh, Dawn of the Aspects 2. And then just Electric because we Buckle can... <laughs> and just because we can... Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Hearthstone, which is a brand new game coming out from Blizzard Entertainment that got announced today. So we're going to talk a little bit about Hearthstone just because we can. It's not necessarily lore related, but it's uh, a big major thing that happened today that we want to talk about. And because of that, we also are going to talk a little bit about uh, Blizzard All-Stars, which is another game that Blizzard is working on. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get things started here in the lore portion of the uh, of today's broadcast. We're going to be talking about Kill Jaden and the Shadow Pact, which is a book, uh, in-game book. It's chapter 3 of the History of Warcraft. Um, takes place 45 years before Warcraft Orcs and Humans. And it says... <clears throat> Around the time of Medivh's birth on Azeroth, Kil'jaeden the Deceiver sat in the brooded amongst his followers within the Twisting Nether. The cunning demon lord, under orders of his master Sargeras, was plotting the Burning Legion's second invasion of Azeroth. This time, he would not allow any mistakes. Kil'jaeden surmised that he needed a new force to weaken Azeroth's defenses, before the Legion even set foot upon the world. If the mortal races... There we go. Internet cut out one more time. Let me double check there. It says, um, the mortal races such as the night elves and dragons were forced to contend with a new threat. They would be too weak to pose any real resistance when the Legion's true invasion arrived. It was at this time that Kil'jaeden discovered the lush world of Draenor floating peacefully within the great dark beyond, home to the shamanistic clan-based orcs and their peaceful Draenei. Draenor was idyllic as it was as it was vast. The noble orc clans roamed the open prairies and hunted for sport, while the inquisitive Draenei built crude cities within the world's towering cliffs and peaks. Kil'jaeden knew that Draenor's denizens had great potential to serve the Burning Legion. 
they could be cultivated properly. Now, here's uh, here's one other thing. I guess we can kind of talk about this as I try and get this call back real quick. Uh, which apparently I cannot at the moment. Uh, but as soon as I can get the call back, uh, I will. Uh, but yeah, like we talked about last week, I'm doing a solo show at the moment. Uh, like we talked about last week, we have uh, Medivh, uh, whose mother was Aegwyn, and Aegwyn had this uh, fight with Sargeras, or the uh, the avatar of Sargeras. At which point, Sargeras uh, kind of imbued his essence into Aegwyn whenever she quote unquote killed him. And because of this, um, once she basically Aegwyn got really old, and people stopped wanting to. Uh, have her as the guardian. The the Council of Tears Fall was saying like, hey, you know, you got to give it up. You got to give the guardianship up. And so, uh, what what comes down is that she goes and gets pregnant, finds a mate, someone to father a child, and she's basically going to make this child her uh, successor. And it was of course Medivh. And whenever Medivh was born, uh, he was sort of. The, the essence of Sargeras was sort of attached to him, and he was born with sort of a split personality of uh, Sargeras and Medivh. But anyways, uh, continuing on now. Of the two races, Kil'jaeden saw that the warrior orcs were more susceptible to the Legion's corruption. He enthralled the, the older orc shaman near Zul, in much the same way that Sargeras brought Queen Ashara under his control in ages past. Using the cunning shaman as his conduit, the demon spread battle lust and savagery throughout the orc clans. Before long, the spiritual race was transformed into a bloodthirsty people. Kil'jaeden then urged Ner'zhul and his people to take a last step, to give themselves over entirely to the pursuit of death and war. Yet, the old shaman, sens shaman sensing that his people would be enslaved to hatred forever, somehow resisted the demon's command. Sometimes when I, I read this stuff, I feel like I'm doing like a non non picturesque version of um, like lore for noobs. You know what I mean? Um, yes. <clears throat> but anyways. Um, it doesn't really make a mention in here, but I believe at this point Kil'jaeden would have known who the uh, Draenei were. Considering. The land and whatnot. That's a good point. Yeah, but I mean, like in the book, or in this particular book, uh, in, in game, this in game book, like Kill Jaden, it doesn't even mention that. You know, it's just like Kill Jaden sees this world of Draenor and he sees uh, orcs and Draenei, but he makes no mention of the fact that he knows who the Draenei are. Interesting. Um, frustrated by Ner'zhul's resistance, Kil'jaeden searched for another orc who would deliver his people into the Legion's hands. The clever demon lord finally found the willing disciple he sought, Ner'zhul's ambitious apprentice, Gul'dan. Kil'jaeden promised Gul'dan untold power in exchange for his utter obedience. The younger orc became an avid student of demonic magic and developed into the most powerful mortal warlock in history. He taught other young orcs the arcane arts and strove to eradicate the orc shamanistic traditions. Gul'dan showed a new brand of magic to his brethren, a terrible new power that reeked of doom. Now I definitely feel like I'm talking like Lord for Nooms. Kil'jaeden, seeking to tighten his hold over the orcs, helped Gul'dan found his Shadow Council, a secretive sect that manipulated the clans and spread the use of warlock magics throughout Draenor. As more and more orcs began to wield warlock magics, the gentle fields and streams of Draenor began to, black it, began to blacken and fade. Over time, the vast prairies the orcs had called home for generations withered away, leaving only red, barren soil. The demon energies were slowly killing the world. So Except that is from the... That. Yeah, that is for the... Uh, the that's the in-game book, book Jaden and the Shadow Pact. And basically, it's just talking about how... Uh, Kill Jaden, more or less, uh, is is recruiting the the orcs into the Burning Legion uh, for the sole purpose of invading Azeroth and sort of weakening Azeroth as a whole, 
so that the Burning Legion can come back in and invade once again because they have a personal vendetta against Azeroth as we are the one of the very few places that uh, they have invaded and we fought them off. Of course, by this time we've only done it once. We haven't done it the second time yet. I thought we were the only place that had done that. Um, we don't know that for sure. I suppose, but uh, uh I don't know. If somewhere else had done it, you'd think we'd know about it. Possibly. Like, I mean, we know that planets have been... Why would the Burning Legion show up on Azeroth and be like, you know, tell us that other people have fought them off and give us that hope? Uh, Warlocks seem have... That... Mm. Maybe. But, I mean, the demons, the demons that Warlocks control don't... I mean, it's not like they just open-endedly tell them everything they want to know. They, uh, I mean, we, we, I think we talked about this not too long ago, that the uh, Warlocks and the Demons that they control, it's sort of like a mutual beneficial pact between the Warlock and the Demon. Uh, it depends on what Demon. Hmm. I suppose. I don't know. I just don't think that, I mean, I just don't think that if, if someone, if, like, uh, I don't think a, big, a major leader of the Burning Legion or anyone would, like, show up and be like, you know, this other people have also fought us back. You know, like, no one's gonna say, come out and mention their downfalls to the people they're trying to conquer to give them hope that, you know, they want to oh, be... Oh, yeah, no, like, we, like our, our players, our, our players, our characters might not know it in-game, but we, the player, would know that. I'm sure Blizz would get that across to us in some way, shape, or form. But it's not important information for us to know. But isn't the uh, speciality of Azeroth the fact that we did beat them once? Like, isn't that a big sticking point as to why we're special snowflakes? Yeah. It can Yeah. Well, I mean, we beat them more than once. We beat them three times now. Right, right. Sort of. Two and a half, I guess. Depends on if you count the Sunwell as an invasion. I will never forget the Sunwell, so yes. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, next, the next book, and the last book before Warcraft works into humans, um, Rise of the Horde. It says, The orcs became increasingly aggressive under the secret control of Gul'dan and his Shadow Council. They constructed massive arenas where the orcs honed their warrior skills in trials of combat and death. During this period, a few clan chieftains spoke out against the growing depravity of their race. One such chieftain, Duratan, of the Frostwolf clan, warned against the orcs losing themselves to hate and fury. His words fell on deaf ears, however, as stronger chieftains, such as Grom Hellscream of the Warsong clan, stepped forward to champion the new age of warfare and dominance. Kil'jaeden knew that the orc clans were almost ready, but he needed to be certain of their ultimate loyalty. In secret, he had the Shadow Cants Council summon Manoroth the Destructor, the living vessel of destruction and rage. Gul'dan called the clan chieftains together and convinced them that drinking Manoroth's raging blood would make them utterly invincible. Led by Grom Hellscream, all the clan chiefs except Duratan drank and thereby sealed their fates as slaves to the Burning Legion. Empowered by Manoroth's rage, the chieftains unwittingly extended this subjugation, subjugation <clears throat> to their unsuspecting brethren. Consumed with the curse of this new bloodlust, the orcs sought to unleash their fury, for, uh, fury on anyone who stood before them. Sensing that the time had come, Gul'dan united the warring clans into a single unstoppable horde. However, knowing that the various chieftains like Hellscream and Doomhammer would vie for overall supremacy, Gul'dan set up a puppet warchief to rule over his new horde. Blackhand the Destroyer, a particularly depraved and vicious orc warlord, warlord, was chosen to be Gul'dan's puppet. Under Blackhand's command, the horde set out to test itself against the simple Draenei. Now, before we get into that, I would like to say that apparently I've been watching far too much Canadian television, as <laughs> uh, I've somehow forgotten how to pronounce A in the English language. Um, 
<laughs> before before you continue on, I'm, I'd just like to point out that Rise of the Horde uh, does. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Retcon. Contradict. Retcon, that's a bad word. Does retcon uh, some of the things that you're saying? Like, this is from like a vanilla in game lore book. Yeah, isn't this it? is uh, it's from an in game lore book. That's what this whole series has been about is about the in game lore books that describe the history of Warcraft before the uh, world of Warcraft. Before um, Jedi became super powerful space alien squids with high technology. Exactly. So there you go, you got it. <laughs> While you're talking, I'm trying to find. There we go, that'll work. I'm trying to find. Uh, I'm trying to queue up the, the break real quick. Okay, well, uh. Yeah. Okay, now continuing. Uh, the last two paragraphs says, Over the course of a few months, the Horde eradicated nearly every Draenei living on Draenor. Only a scattered handful of survivors managed to evade the orc's awesome wrath. Flushed with victory, Gul'dan reveled in the Horde's power and might. Still, he knew that without any enemies to fight, the Horde would consume itself with endless infighting and its unstoppable appetite for glorious slaughter. Kil'jaeden knew that the Horde was finally prepared. The orcs had become the Burning Legion's greatest weapon. The cunning demon shared his knowledge with his waiting master, and Sargeras agreed that the time of his revenge had finally come. So, there is that. Um, so yeah, basically going back to uh, just before the orcs invade Azeroth, uh, we've talked about this before in uh, the Draenei episode that we did last season, in season four, that the orcs and the Draenei were very peaceful with each other. They traded with each other and all that good stuff. It was like, uh, you know, any other country, really, or any other, you know, nation, divided nations, where, uh, generally speaking, they were on good terms with each other and all that stuff, and, uh, then one day the orcs were just like, yo, we're gonna kill you, and that's pretty much how it happened. There was no sort of build-up to this, uh, outside of the orcs, you know, drinking the blood of Manoroth and all that stuff, but, I mean, like, in terms of the, in the eyes of the Draenei, there was no real warning sign, if you will. It just sort of happened one day. And so they were not at all prepared for it, and uh, most of the Draenei, Draenei died um, on Azeroth. And then, of course, we know that they would eventually get in a giant, massive spaceship and crash land on Azeroth and join the Alliance. Join the, the good side. The winning side. Yep. Do you said the wedding side? The winning side? I'm still hearing wedding. Wedding? Like, yeah. are you saying wetting or wedding? Wedding with two Ds. That wouldn't even make sense. Like, if you said the wedding exactly. side, I would be like, you know, okay. So now you're saying that we, we piss ourselves in fear of you, but... Uh, Oh, I'm not done. Uh, Apparently, okay, we're so afraid of you, we get married. Hey, there you go. <laughs> That's how it works. It happens in uh, Wolfheart. Does it? Yeah, Malfurion. We don't, and, uh, we don't speak of Wolfheart. <laughs> Malfurion and... Uh, oh, you haven't finished Wolfheart yet, have you? Mm -mm. No, I have. Uh, no, Pride hasn't. Uh, whoops. Oh. It's not like I don't know what happens in Wolfheart. Oh, I suppose that's true. I'm You're not, not saying our oh, best ending. Mm. All the dragons. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I can really tell you about, uh, about all that. I mean, uh, we pretty much know the story. We know what happens next, and that's that uh, Warcraft Orcs and Humans happens, the first game. Which we've talked about many, many times, the first war. Uh, the Horde goes on, ends up taking taking out Stormwind. Then uh, you have Lothar, who gathers a bunch of people, heads up north to Lordaeron, and then uh, the Alliance, uh, you know, kicks the Horde's ass. Kicks the ass. it should be, yeah. Although oh. I don't really... Here's, here's my deal. We can talk about this very quickly, because we don't have a whole lot of time before we get to go on break, but uh, I don't understand why they call it the... Uh, first and Second War, when technically the First War never ended. You know what I mean? 
before the second war. I mean, I know that it's, you know, game one and game two, but, uh, I mean, if you think about it, there was really no end to the first war. It just sort of became the second war whenever um, the, uh, alliance started fighting back, so. Uh, remind me, because I get mixed up with the wars, what do they call the first and second war? Uh, the first war ends, or the first war, I guess, so in a, on a social level, ends when Lothar runs away to South Shore and takes yep. takes the survivors of storm of the raid on Stormwind to South Shore. So the end of the first war is when the Horde destroys uh, Stormwind. Stormwind. And then the second war is over when the Horde is pushed back. I guess defeated at Blackrock and then pushed back into Draenor through the Dark Portal. Like, pushed back through the Dark Portal. And when did the internment camps happen? Um, after the Second War. The internment camps came about because there were still, like, there were still Horde members, like, scattered out. Like, some, some clans uh, scattered after the end, uh, after their defeat in um, Blackrock, they sort of scattered, and so the orcs that weren't pushed back through the Dark Portal were just kind of out in the wilderness of the Eastern Kingdoms, and they were caught, captured, and put in internment camps. Make sense? Skype probably just crashed again. Or Dunn just doesn't care. I don't know. Um, I, well, but anyway, no, crushed. I, I don't okay. care. But like, <laughs> <laughs> once you answered the question, like in short form, I was like, oh, okay, that helped. That that was for me. And then, and then he crashed. I'm like, eh. yeah. Oh, anyways, it happened after the defeat of Black Rock Mountain. Okay. So, uh, with that though, we need to go on break. When we get back, Donica's gonna take over, and he's gonna be talking about uh, Dawn of the Aspects two. Major spoilers ahead, so if you don't want to be spoiled, um. Come back in uh, half an hour so we can talk about Hearthstone and Blizzard All-Stars. We'll be right back right here on Boy This Lore, Nordisol Radio, NordisolRadio.com. You're listening to Nordisol Radio, where gamers rock. This podcast is brought to you courtesy of Skype. And we're back, I guess. Hopefully, if you can still hear us. Uh, I am going to talk about the second dawn of the Aspects book. I'm going to do it in... A more concise way that I did last time. Last time I just pretty much told you what happened throughout the entire book. This one's a bit slower, so I'm just going to take key points. Uh, there's one in particular I'd like to. There's some speculation about, so I'm just going to. Well, before that, you should you should do the plugs. Well, I thought we'd done the plugs. No, we didn't do the plugs. <sighs> <laughs> You're all like, oh, done. You just go straight in. You didn't say, didn't you going straight in and doing the plugs? That's what I meant. How, how would I know that? Especially as I heard you do the plugs earlier. I don't know, but do the plugs so you can start <laughs> reading the book so I can go take a nap. <laughs> okay then. Uh, <laughs> first of all, if you're listening live and you're not already, you can join us here in the IRC. That's at www.nordicelradio.com forward slash chat. You put in your name. And then you're in here with me, Necro is here, Angry Smurf is here, Howie will be here soon. And you can send your IRC questions to me. I think it's like you right click my name and then hit query and then I get a little message and it beeps in my ear and we read them out at the end of the show. If you are listening on YouTube, if you're watching the video on YouTube, you can email us at law at omfg.fm and we answer those questions also. You can also buy a t-shirt from www.printonblack.co.uk forward slash the smoking gamer. I think we'll get you there. And 
Yeah, you can get the cool, awesome. Uh, do you even quest shirt? You can get the but where there's law shirt, the law for noob shirt, etc., etc., etc. If Pride has done it on his YouTube channel or on a show, we probably got it in shirt form, and you can buy it. It's pretty good. Uh, and of course, all those things are made by me by hand. So, blood, sweat, and tears. Am I missing anything? No, sounds good to me. Go for it. Okay. As I was saying, uh, it's it's a slower book, uh, but there's a few like pretty big events in it. So I'm just going to list off some of the less some of the events that happen with less room for speculation as to what the fuck is actually going on. And then we'll, if Pride's going for a nap, I guess me and Necro will speculate over the big one uh, that sort of happens halfway through the book. I'll try to keep it in chronological order, but I might not. Uh, okay. First of all, the Brown Drake. What is going on here? Broke the Matrix. Broke the Matrix. Uh, first of all, Necro, have you read this yet? Not part two, no. Of course, I, I forgot to mention, if you don't have e uh, Dawn of the Aspects Part 1 or Part 2, you can go to Amazon Dart and then whatever, like, URL your country uses, and it is, I imagine, one of your currency, or two of your currency, I don't know, I, I can't remember, two of your currency is how much it costs, and you can read that on Kindle, or, yeah. Someone asked me if I knew when the like audiobooks coming out. I didn't even know that we're making them. So it's coming out right now. Oh, is it? Yeah, you're about to <laughs> you're about to read it. Oh, oh <laughs> duh. <laughs> duh. Okay. Uh, we are first of all the Brown Drake, who isn't named in the first book, is confirmed to be Nosdormu. So uh, I know a lot of people were wondering what was going on with him. So Nasdormu kept his color. He, he he's brown. He is indeed. Um, right, what is there going you on with you, Mike? I mean, static is getting increasingly louder. Static. Yeah, you know, like or when like you a... have uh, like a microphone and then a phone goes off, like right near it, and like phone microphones hate phones. That's all I'm hearing. Uh, it's sort of stopped now, but I'm not sure if it's going over the stream. I imagine it's not, because otherwise people would be complaining about it, maybe? I don't know, but I threw my phone across the room, so hopefully that's that stopped it. Okay. Alright, good stuff. Uh, yeah, so Nuzdormu is the brown drake from uh, the first book. He has a sand breath attack. He, he sort of helps... Mala goes out of a few jams in this book fighting the undead protodrakes. We do find out where the undead protodrakes come from. It doesn't seem that they are naturally occurring, so there goes that theory from a couple weeks ago. But uh, we'll get to that later. That's linked in with the big event that I want to speculate over. We are introduced also to a female drake by the name of Talonyxia. She's a blue drake. She's sort of blue and green. Uh, and no, she's gold. How did I get that so wrong? Um, she's quite a big drake. Uh, like, when I say big, Nelfarian is bigger. But that's about it, really. Um, she seems to be one of the first, one of the eldest talking drakes. Because there seems to be some sort of generation leap between non talking and talking drakes. Uh, she is herding all the drakes together and conspiring to go fight Galakrond. And Malagos does not trust her, and by extension, Kalagos doesn't trust her either. Uh, who else is there that shows up and does? Ysara does not want to fight, and her th she is gathering drakes to her person who wants to talk to Galakrond in, like, peace talks. Apparently, she says that she has already spoke to Galakrond and Galakrond will speak to them again. This isn't shown in the book, but she sort of says to Alex Straza and Alex Straza and Malaga is like, yo, that's a really bad idea. Don't do that. <laughs> um, 
And right at the end of the book, Koros, who is uh, the blue drake slightly larger than Malagos, they fought. Uh, he's a blue and green colored drake. Uh, they fought Malagos in the first book. He has been hanging around with... He's sort of been brown-nosing up to Talonixia, to Ysera, and at the end of the book, it seems he is going to summon Galakrond to make a deal with Galakrond. So uh, he is definitely one to look out for. At the very end of the book, I mean, Malagos is sinking into a tar pit, but the big thing in this book <laughs> is uh, we find out where the undead drakes come from. Uh, and it is actually Galakrond vomits them up. We can only assume, like, all the drakes that he, like, eats, and he is big enough to swallow them whole, he pukes them up and they are undead, so it's sort of... Oh, what What's it like? Um... I oh, know, it, sort of, it sort of reminds me of the Zerg. I guess I've been playing a lot of StarCraft, but... He's just going around spewing up uh, undead drakes. Another thing that is really significant to me, at least... Oh shit, I forgot something. The, we don't know who the man is yet, but <laughs> Malagos does see the man, and Malagos says, who are you, what are you? And then the man just starts teleporting around, and Malagos tries for a bit. That's Ronin. So, uh, a man Thor. <sighs> Fuck Ronin. <laughs> <laughs> That's my position, I'm sticking to it. Necro, just keep up that behavior, and no one will have a problem with me. Anyway. <laughs> I was just going to say that, now everyone will hate me! It's good. Um, but yeah, we don't know anything about him. I'm sort of hoping that we get a, another meeting with him, and maybe he'll say something. Next book, maybe? But uh, yeah. as I was going to Galakrond is vomiting up Undead Drakes. Uh... I, I think it was Malagos and Alex Straz that had the conversation, or it might be Nazdormu. And someone has a conversation with someone else, and they say how Galakrond has changed so much. Like, he was always a big drake, but uh, he was never big enough to go around swallowing people. Uh, the theory that Malagos comes up with, I'm fairly sure it's Malagos, is that normally drakes will not eat other drakes. They'll fight to the death and stuff, but they'll never never uh, eat each other because of some sense of taboo. But Galakrond has, and Malagos' theory is because Galakrond did that, that is what is causing this change in him. And not only is the change that he is now fuck off big, for lack of a better term, uh, he's also growing extra limbs on his body. He has a second head Damn. growing out of his hip. For example, like his hind, his hind quarters. So, uh, the spe what I'd like to do here is speculate what the fuck is going on with Galakrond. Because I, I've got a theory, but I am going to hand it to you, Necro, first, and see if you, uh, if your stab in the dark is the same as my stab in the dark, and if you're in the IRC, if you have like a guess why Galakrond is all like extra limbs and shit now, uh, you can send me a uh, message in the IRC and we might read some of your theories from, on Galakron specifically, in this little segment we're doing. Take it away, Necro. Um, wow, I'm kind of on the spot here. So why is he growing extra limbs and why is he so big and why did he start eating drakes? Is that the question? Yeah, pretty much. And the throwing of undead drakes. Oh god, I don't even have a good answer. I'd have to think about it still. Um, I'm raising my hand. Go, I'll come tapping you in. Go for it. The old gods did it. I was. That, that is my theory. <clears throat> that's not a theory. That's fact. I'm, I'm stating it. I'm not <laughs> theorizing anything. I'm <laughs> stating the old gods did it. Okay. Well, it, it, that's <laughs> this is Nack writing the book. The old gods did it. I suppose that is true. Oh, you're right. And that's also why the mystery man is Ronin. Why would it be Ronin, though? Because Nack did it. Because Nack's writing a book. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta stop forgetting that. 
Um, I, I mean, I thought the old god did it because, uh, like, old gods and, like, extra faces. Like, I mean, Yog saron is the beast with a thousand moors. He's just, he's just mouths, so that seems to be an old god thing, extra bits. Um, Although, realistically, it could also be a dragon in, in like, a, a guise as well. You never know. A dragon in a guise? Yeah. Well, the, the, the dude? Yeah. Well, that doesn't explain... I, I guess it could, but that doesn't explain why Galakrond has two heads. Um, They're not in conventional places. I was either. actually He's responding to someone in the IRC. I don't even know why I said it out loud. Okay. And it was just one of those moments where I was sitting there typing and then just said it out loud. I see. Uh, uh, the listeners' live theories on this is, uh, I think this all might have just been a test by the Titans to see who will become the new aspects. Um, or the first aspects, as would be the case. I don't know. Are they that sort of person, though, to do that? I'm not... Well, I mean, they did make two giant zones just to experiment. And there's like goops and oozes and stuff wind, uh, wandering around there now, so... I mean, they're not exactly altruistic in their experimentation. I suppose that's true. Uh, Dark Dude 103 says, Congratulations, your Galakrond has evolved into old god servants. <laughs> uh, Dan underscore 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 uh, theorizes that cannibalism is like you gain I'm reading this out word for word cannibalism law is like you gain powers from consuming flesh at the same thing you are Aztecs with the eating of hearts and such so I know it, if drakes become cannibals do they become two drakes eventually I don't know uh, let's just clear out the ones that are fun theories. So I don't, I don't know I mean I, at the end of the day I mean like I said it, it's definitely old god related I mean the whole point of these books is that it's supposed to talk about the aspects getting their power Aspect. from the Titans. Well, it could be it could be all god related, and this is just me thinking out loud. This isn't a fact or anything, but like, let's say the Titans are like, oh shit, those old gods that we tried to imprison that clearly didn't work. Uh, let's. Let's give some of some Azeroth creatures powers to deal with it, so we don't have to. And then they pick the dragons, maybe I don't know. I just mm. don't know. But it seems like it went from like kind of a big jump because what we've seen from the old guys before is like it's a slow, like corruption. Like Deathwing was slow going until like the very end where he was like spouting tentacles and shit and going crazy. But Galakrond just went from, like, regular to just completely fucking nuts, like, immediately, it seems like, right? Uh, it's never really stated. Like, at the start of the book, Galakrond is flying around eating people, so... We don't know how long it's been beforehand. Hmm. Hmm. Thinking about it in the context of the story, it probably is the old gods, but I'm wondering if they're gonna actually have them do it for a purpose, or just be like, raw, they're old gods, what do you think they're doing it for? Like, I would like to have, if they had, like, a purpose, I, I would be interesting in fleshing out their... I know their thoughts are basically just, like, chaos, everything's chaos, and we're just gonna kill everything, but... Do I wouldn't we, mind do it we know for sure world. that this takes place after the Titans versus the old god war? Uh, we don't know for sure. I I don't know. Because granted, we don't really even know exactly when that whole fight took place either. Yeah, that's true. It could be actually the opening salvo of the old god uh, mm -hmm. thingamabob uh, Titans War. Because here's what we know. We know that the... And this goes back on something that, you know, Necro may find interesting as well, because I don't think he was... Or I know for a fact he wasn't around whenever I brought this up, but... I mean, you have the... The Dwarves, the uh, Adventurers Guild, or whatever the fuck they're called. 
who are going out trying to find artifacts, and basically their whole purpose is to find out what what the deal with the old gods is, or what the deal with the titans is. And with with this, we know for a fact that the dragons know quite a bit about the titans because they interacted with them for quite some time. And so why didn't the dwarves just ask the fucking dragons what the deal was? <laughs> That's but, a good uh, point. <laughs> but uh I mean we don't I don't I, I'm just trying to like like piece together in my head exactly when this is taking place like this is this before the Titans came to Azeroth and and you know started fucking with the uh, old gods and started making their little um, areas of scientific exploration and all that stuff or if the, is this after that and the Titans are coming back but I don't know why the Titans would come back unless the old gods started acting up again, and because the old gods started acting up again, they came back, did this, and then took off again. You know what I mean? Like, there's two two sort of ways it can go. I think I'm leaning more towards this, the, the Titan, Titanic thing has already happened, and then the old gods are now starting to mess with Galakrond for whatever reason, which hopefully will be explained a little bit later on. You'd hope so. So, what you're saying is basically Galakrond is like Deathwing Mark 1. Yeah. This is where all the experimentation went. And the idea right. that, hey, maybe taking over a dragon and manipulating a dragon could be a good idea. Yeah. That makes sense. So, the Titans kind of come back, or perhaps they never left. I mean, you never know, because we don't know that story in its entirety. All we know is the bullet points of old gods titans came titans created all this stuff old gods started interfering they had a war and somewhere along the way the titans gave the aspects their powers over you know various things well a point i'd like to make that someone else just actually made in the chat as well is this would have to be after the first confrontation between the titans and the old gods because there aren't like elemental lords and stuff flying around everywhere because that's what that's what Azeroth was before they came in the first place, right? So they don't have to be entirely after they because left. they were like the Tauren were here before the Titans showed up. The well, Trolls I mean, were here the, uh, the Titans showed up. The Mantid were definitely around before yeah. Yasarj died, and that happened during the war. So, well, I'm not saying that there, just because there aren't uh, elementals everywhere, I'm saying wouldn't there be like a ton compared to how it is now if this didn't take place after their first battle or the first war or whatever it's called that could be wouldn't true. there be like the other the other thing is elementals? yeah the other thing is why haven't these dragons like come upon any of these torn or these trolls or these uh you know so the silithid race you know anything like that um that is a good question. We're getting in deep. Uh, We're getting in deep today, boys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, I mean, the the Nerubians that sh should have set up shop. That well, I don't know. It depends when it happens. Oh, I'm so confused. See, that's what I'm saying. It's it's like what the fuck is going? Like, the more you think about it, the more none of this makes sense. Why are they writing this book? All right. Because, like, at this time, Azeroth is one giant, you know, we're still on the Pangea form of Azeroth, right? Where everything is all together on one continent. Uh, I, I assume so. Yeah, because, well, we, it would have I mean, to be. obviously, it would have to be, because the Sundering isn't going to happen for, you know, a millennia or whatever. Um, so what I'm saying is, like, we know that the Pandaren... The Tauren, the Trolls, the uh, Nerubians, the uh, Silithid, countless other rate Mantid are all you know here on, on. They're all around, right? Uh, Furbolds. Yeah, are and, around as well. and and uh, so the dragons, right? But like the way this book has been talking, the dragons don't know of any of this stuff. Well, keep in mind, though the dragons are developing, like, speech, and some of them are quite clever, they're still, like, communicating, like, uh, I'm going back to the first book, and Netherian says to Malagos, you fight good. Uh, Malagos, on several 
instance who says, I am the cleverest, and it's not like, it's like they can't form, like, proper sentences, their vocabulary hasn't, like, developed that much. So they okay. might see Tauren, they just don't distinguish Tauren from the other well, that also brings creatures in that a, they eat. Another question of, of like, See, the, but that's just like even that for, for me furthers the the questioning of, of the timing of all this because if the dragons are just now starting to sort of develop their intelligence, then like wouldn't the trolls and Torin be just as dumb? Like how Possibly. early is this? Because I mean, but is that really a thing? Because the Silithid showed that they were pretty smart during this time because they have working knowledge of the old gods you see what I'm saying like they were mm. sentient even back then because they have a written history of of those events does that uh, make sense do you get what I'm getting at like are we saying yeah, that the yeah. dragons were dumber than the Silith or were dumber than the you know I mean, Manted there might be. That might be because, like, I mean, in this book, there are still many proto drakes that are not that can't talk. And when Talonixia is like giving a speech, like, "We will fight Galakrond. We are many, and he is one. We will fight and win." Uh, there are dumb proto drakes there that need to be herded by intelligent proto drakes. Like they're all living in like a commune, proto drake commune, and like there's dumb and smart proto drakes there. So, I don't know, this, I, I think, like, intelligence has only really been around for a generation, like, we're seeing the first generation of smart proto -drake. so this is probably very early in the, in what we call, I don't know, because how long were the proto <laughs> around before they started talking? We don't know, I don't, we don't know. Uh... And Dan Knock. underscore underscore says, do the dragons go all over Azeroth in the book, or is it just centered in Northern? Well, it doesn't matter, because the Nerubians were all in Northern. Like, that's where their big area of the world was. Uh, well, you've got to ask, was it Northrend before it split off? Well, they were in... But no, of course, but I mean, they were in that area. Of what would eventually split off How and be in Azeroth? Northern. Like... Um. They were on the northern part of the con they were at the northern part of the continent, which is where the the dragons kind of tend to stay, even in our time now. So they were saying that it, even if it's just northern, right? Like there would still be Nerubians there, not necessarily trolls and Torin, yep. as they were in the south, um, specifically and more towards the south. Uh, or the trolls were more towards the southeast, and Torin were more towards the southwest. But there were still. You know, Furbolgs, and uh, there were still Nerubians in the north. Actually, um, I, oh, I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> because, it's like, all very in, complicated. Uh, we just opened uh, ourselves up to book, look. Go ahead. In okay. the first book, uh, when Caligos teleported the artifact to a mountain range. It wasn't stated where that mountain range was, uh, but it was like because obviously he went into a vision and then flew there while he was in the vision and ended up at the mountain range. But before that, he was with Alex Straza, and Alex Straza was watching over a human settlement, and there aren't any human settlements really in Northrend. So, wait. So that implies that some of the story, ha but that's modern day, but oh, okay. I don't even Hold know. On. Wait, are you saying that when, okay, when you say Alex Ross was, watch was watching over a human settlement, when, is this like back where they are now, like with the Galakron and all that stuff? Or is this... Oh, no, 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 this is, okay. in, uh, this is like modern modern Alex Strasser is watching over a something. Okay, that, then that makes... But, uh, then that's that's fine, because I was about to shit a brick and, like... Yeah. You know humans I mean? were around for much longer <laughs> than we thought. Yeah, apparently humans have been around for a lot longer than uh, we've been told. 
But, um, okay, are there any other points other than these that you want to bring up about the story? Uh, well, just like the same as last time, it's it's a fairly quick book to read. Um, it's a cheap book, and it's it's it, I feel this is the book that sets up for bigger and better things in like the next one. I think the next one will be more action-packed, if you will. Uh, Knack uh, is a lot of things, and an author of high-detailed action scenes is definitely one of his talents. Character development, maybe not so much. But uh, like the next book, I, have, I feel is going to be really good, but you won't quite understand what happens if you don't read the first two. So everyone should buy the first two and, and read them. That's the only other. I will always advocate people reading books because it's good for you <laughs> in the brains. And my girlfriend works at a bookshop and she's like all about the books and she'd get mad at me if I didn't prize books. So, uh. Oh, oh, yes, uh, the question. Quick point in the uh, IRC Yusara has actively been. Every time they kill an undead drake, Yusara has been checking to see if it's a brother. She, uh, her brother is. It, it's still MIA, mm. and probably did was he confirmed dead? I'm not even sure if he was confirmed dead anymore. <laughs> We're not sure what the eh. fuck is going on now. We just brought it. We, eh. we can po- totally shattered this whole book. Like like fuck, golden. This book should be called the Shattering because that's what's happening right now. <laughs> uh, back on why is no other race shown up? I just just had a thought. Uh, I mean, I think we all know that Knack is in part responsible for the dragon aspect showing up in the game at all. Uh, Metzen and Knack sat down. Metzen obviously, no, Knack used to write like Dragonlance books. So he's a dragon guy and Metzen was like, yo, let's get some dragons up in here and I like Knack, so let's... Or maybe Knack went to Metzen, I don't know. But uh, I think basically what Knack is doing is focusing on he's like the dragons are his babies. Some dragons like Corstraza, maybe. What's his name? I don't even fucking know. I don't care. Knack likes dragons, and that's why he's not talking about other people. That's that's the point I think I'm trying to make. That's fair, I suppose. I don't know, but we need to go on break. Um, but I feel like this this should be talked about more. But. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll wait for the third. You yelled book. at me. Li- you yelled at me last time when I spoke about the book because I spoke about it too much. You're like, oh, done. We. <laughs> well, no, that's show. because you were basically giving us a paragraph by paragraph breakdown of the book. Hey, man! According to YouTube, <laughs> that was pretty good. They were really upset the following week when there was no story time. So, well, the show's after after today. The show's in your hands, so you do what you want with it. I, I shall. Uh-oh. Sort of. I am going to, however, today, done. I am going to give you the password to the uh, emails. So oh, shit. The password to the emails. <clears throat> don't make me regret this. <laughs> don't do anything stupid next week. Uh, why would I? I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go on break. Song coming up is uh, Imagine Dragons Radioactive. We'll be back right here on Boy This Lore and Ordisol Radio and OrdisolRadio.com. When we get back, we'll be talking about uh, Hearthstone and Blizzard All-Stars. Stay tuned. You're listening to Nordisol Radio, where gamers rock. Don't forget to visit our YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash NordRTV. Also visit our Facebook and Twitter pages at facebook and twitter.com forward slash NordRasul Radio. This podcast is brought to you courtesy of Skype. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to But Wait, There's Lore, right here on Nordiso Radio, NordisoRadio.com. I am Pride, joined by Necroxus Dunn, and Howitzer has finally joined us as well, just in time for us to talk about Blizzard's new game that they announced today, this morning. Uh, Hearthstone. 
which no doubt is going to see a lot of playtime on my YouTube channel in the near future. Uh, that probably did I tell you about the stream soon enough for you to watch the Shoutcast match? Or am I the only one who's seen that? I never even tuned into the stream. Oh, okay, so I'm the only one who's seen Oh, actually, no. Necro, did you watch it? Nope. So I'm the only one... Oh. Yep. I, I'm the only one that reads the books. I'm the only one that watches the streams. I don't even know why I have you guys around. What was it? I was napping, okay? That was like 10 or 11 in the morning for me. I was napping. Yeah, that was too, was, that was too early. I was playing, huh? Yep. <laughs> there were much better things. Um, so, yeah, done. Apparently, you know more about this than the rest of us, so why don't you let us know what's going on? Uh, why did I say anything? <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, Well, Hearthstone. okay, I mean, well, here's the deal. Hearthstone is, uh, well, number one, okay, number one, they, there's a cinematic for Hearthstone. It's not a real cinematic, so it only ha counts halfway. But they did finally put the Master Race into a cinematic for, for Warcraft. Sort of. Of course, Ish. that would be a gnome. There is a gnome in the cinematic for Hearthstone. <laughs> uh, didn't, when, you were, uh, when you were talking to I didn't, Kozak, didn't you say, uh, dude, can you put a gnome in? And he's like, we'll try for the next one. So, uh, there you go, Pride, having an active impact on the game. <laughs> I didn't know it was a gnome until you said it was a gnome. There is a gnome. I, first, I went back and saw it, but at first, I, when I saw it, I thought it was. I just looked at it as a dwarf. Well, what can you do? I don't know. So Blizzard Gnomes did get my. Up, I mean, Blizzard did get my thanks for that. I uh, I tweeted them graciously. Um, however. Hearthstone is basically a, uh, it's called Hearthstone, and the tagline is, uh, what is it, Heroes of Warcraft? Uh, yeah, and that yeah. would also explain why HeroesofWarcraft.com was registered about two months ago. Yeah. And, uh, so, there's that, but basically what it is, is it's a, uh, it's a card game, it's a, a, uh, I guess it's geared more towards, like, iPad than it is... PC though, from what I was there is hearing. there is an i it will be available on iPad shortly after official like PC release. Uh, they've already got it working on iPad and there were iPads at PAX with the yeah, game. There on. Were iPads and computers <clears throat> at PAX yeah. that you could play it on. So okay. Well, because what I heard was that it was like geared specifically towards iPads and iPhones, but I don't think it will work so much on a phone because I don't think the screen will be big enough. It's big enough, yeah. So you probably to... can't see it. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, end of the day, it's a card game. Uh, based on, uh, I guess, the World of Warcraft trading card game more or less oh, no, turned no, no. into... No, 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 no. It's completely know, different. Let me finish, let me finish. Based on the World of Warcraft trading card game, but turned into a PC game and then reworked completely. So... Like, that's how I feel development on that went. They were like, hey, we have the, the World of Warcraft trading card game. Why don't we make a computer version of it? And they were like, all right, let's do it. Then they did it. And then they were like, the World of Warcraft trading card game sucks balls. Let's make our <laughs> own. So, I mean, that's how I feel the, the development meetings went in that situation. That, uh... That might have been how it was, uh, how it went down. I see. As of right now, they are saying that there is no similarity other than the fact that they're Warcraft characters on cards, and that they made sure to not go anywhere near what the trading card game is. Yeah. I'd just better tell you about it, really, am not I? Well, well, well my I mean, biggest I, thing I, I, is that this is fantastic for me because this means there's more card art. For Lore for Noobs card, so I don't have to actually go out and like hire people to draw things anymore. You should or... send them a couple to see if they want to use it. Why? Who knows? Maybe they'll give you a job on a team there. I don't want a job at. If I got a job at Blizzard, I wouldn't be able to do my videos anymore. And then That's I true. would do the videos. You trusted me with the Lore uh, like email password, so. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we'd all be I'm doomed. Like I need the keys to the car. For the record, yeah, I mean, Blondie, Blondie because... knows the email. Okay, well, like my my stance on it. So I watched the stream. Uh, at first, I was like, "This isn't Blizzard All Stars," because I was really looking forward to Blizzard All Stars. And actually, yeah, in the open, the, uh, the opening cinematic, up until it gets to the point, I think it's the dwarf with the beer, saying, "Oh, you can just have that's my dwarf." Um, up until that point, uh, I genuinely thought it could be the the thing above the Blizzard All Stars. And he wasn't, and first I was like, what the fuck is this? But actually, after watching the, uh... Like, they had an example match from some of the better people at the game, at Blizzard. And, uh, they had a guy come out and, like, cast it. It was pretty cool. And then, like, during that, I was like, actually, this doesn't look all that bad. This looks like it could be some fun, and it's free-to-play game. So, I'm not gonna lose much. And I, I have spent fortunes on, like, hard games. I love card games. You're I gonna spend find... money on this one too, just as much. You're gonna you're gonna buy all the little card packs. Yeah, um, the the game will be free to play, and then you can either earn uh, like in-game credits to buy like booster packs in-game, at like, or you can uh, pay like real money uh, for them. In a similar way to, I guess, how like. Mobas any, work where you can, yeah, uh, any really, okay, any, you know, microtransaction, <laughs> yeah, any microtransaction based software does it where you have one way to earn it, you have the the grinding way to earn it where you play a bunch of matches and you know you you play a couple hundred matches and then you can afford to buy a card pack or you can be impatient and just buy more cards. And on top of that, there's a third way to do it. You can actually disenchant your cards if you have duplicate cards and then build cards that you want. Uh, I think in the preview of what they did is some guy really wanted the Deathwing card. So he just disenchanted a bunch of cards until he had enough, uh, I think they called it Arcane Dust or something. It, it's one of the dusts from the enchanting profession and then he made the Deathwing card. But Pretty as cool. for the actual game, it, you make a deck based on one of the first nine classes of World of Warcraft. So you've got the Warrior, the Mage, Paladin, Priest, Warlock, uh, all of them apart from Death Knight and Monk. And then yeah. the what the deck is, is you will have like minions. There's like neutral cards like uh, Goldshire Guardsman, who is a battle minion <laughs> you can put on the field. Or like there's class specific cards like in the uh, in the Shoutcast preview, the Warlock player summoned Jaraxxus, which was pretty badass. Uh, oh yeah. When you when you make the deck, if you make say let's stick with Warlock or Druid, that, those were the two that were previewed. Uh, the deck you get a like a hero for Warlocks, it is Gul'dan for Druids, it's Malfurion, and then you play. You draw cards, you play like spell cards or minion cards and put them on the field. And the aim is to take the opponent hero's health down to zero. And that is. And you do that by either attacking with your minions that you put on the field or well, spells. From what, I, from what I saw, it looked a lot like, uh, like Yu-Gi-Oh, really. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of close to Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, like, the I mean, TV just, show, right? You had, like, because, like, the way that it, the screenshots and all that stuff, it looks like a little stadium, right? And you have, like, this uh, thing on this little ball area at the end, right? And then yeah. whenever you attack, you either attack the card or you attack the little energy life sphere thing, right? Hmm, yeah. Which is a lot like the way like that Yu-Gi-Oh! was. Me. Right, where if you attacked uh, one of the things and killed it then you lost points or if there were no active cards on the field for the other guy then you attack his life points directly if that makes uh, sense. you know how much that is going to be said what life like, points like i attack your life points directly like during the stream <laughs> the chat the chat was half filled with people just saying you've activated my trap card <laughs> no doubt i'm sure <laughs> stuff um Let's see if I can pull up the heroes of the 
the various decks. Okay, the more we're hero. In, wait, really quick. So are you locked into those certain decks? Or, like, are there... Like, let's say I'm using a Druid deck. Does that mean I cannot use any card? I can't make my own deck and use, like, Warlock cards in there? Uh, you can't use Warlock-specific cards, but there are... Oh, okay. a, there's a pool of, like, neutral cards. Okay, you're allowed to... But you still have to choose... Like, you just can't make a hybrid deck. You have to choose... No, you, you, can't, of... you can't make a hybrid deck because uh, the deck that you pick, you get that hero. And that is your... Mm. that The hero represents you, I guess. And it is what you attack. That is your life points. Like, for warriors, their hero is Garrosh. So, uh, the, <laughs> the aim is to take Garrosh. Not Broxigar, it's Garrosh. Uh, the orcs have... The orcs. The shaman have uh, Thrall. The rogue is that blood elf chick from the comic book. Oh, nice! Oh man, I'm totally looking at this. I'm totally looking at this. These like screenshots and whatnot. Right now, I'm looking at like the stadium that they have, which was what I was talking about with like the cards. You put them out there, and mm. like you know, sort of the stadium. Like I'm looking at this one. This one is obviously. Uh, Stormwind. I mean, you've got the little Griffin Roost. You've got the Stormwind Shops, the Tower, or the the Cathedral, and the the Clock Tower. That's all in Stormwind. And then I mean, there's another one here that that's Orgrimmar. You've got the you know Zeppelin. You've got the gates. All that stuff. That one is one that they, uh, really they awesome. played in. It had two uh, water wheels. And the only place I can think of that has water wheels in is, isn't it that battleground where it's the the one in Cataclysm that's sort of the Warsong Gulch clone? There's water yeah. wheels there, isn't there? Anyway, either way, as I was saying, um, uh, or the orc shaman, the shaman hero is Thrall. The rogue hero is that blood elf chick from the comic books whose name I can't quite remember. Valera Sanguinar. That's the one. Uh, the Paladin, I I can't make it out to tell it's you the It's got to be Uther. It looks like Uther to me. It might be Uther. The Hunter is Rexagar. The uh, Druid is Malfurion, Warlock's Gul'dan. The Mage Hero is Janet Pridemore, and the Priest is Anduin. Mm. So, Pride, is there anyone you would like to swap out of that? I notice it's... There's a lot of orcs and humans, and I'd like more, like, diversity, personally. I would take out Jaina and put in Ronan. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't know. I would actually... I noticed there was a card that said Archmage Antonitis, and two points in that. Number one, I would rather it be Antonitis than Jaina, because uh, Antonitis is, like, a thousand times more badass and awesome than Jaina Proudmore. But uh, also, I, I like that because it seems they're not necessarily just sticking to um, WoW characters specifically. As the only deal in WoW that, re that is in regards to Antonitis is a statue in Dalaran. Like, Antonitis never appeared in WoW as a character. Oh no, yeah, for real. Um... So I, I do like that little bit. I mean, Rex, are, he hasn't really... I know he has been in World of Warcraft, but not much. Not that I'd personally use Rexar as the hunter hero. I feel... I, I don't know. I just feel there's too much orcs, and I feel there's too much humans, and I'd like to... If I had to say, I'd swap some of the... Like, for priests, I probably wouldn't use Anduin. I would might use, say, Tyrande or something. Well, I find it interesting that they don't allow you to do that already. For example, like, not so for, like, hunters, but if you don't want to use Rex or you want to use someone else, like, for some of the other pyrops, how come Varian isn't on Warrior card? Like, how do you use Varian then? If you wanted to play him, is he, like, a smaller unit on the Warrior card, or is he just unplayable? Or Velen as a priest? I'm wondering how to bring in the lore for that, because I mean, if Garrosh is a warrior in your garage and you're summoning Varian to fight for you because he's a warrior, it's kind, of, it's, kind of, it's kind of weird. I understand that it kind of is just a card game, but still, I think how they should have it is you can switch out the hero that you're using as long as you remain within what they're, you know, 
class is. Right, like, so for uh, example, like Paladin, like you can use Uther, but you could also use Turalyon, or you could also use uh, one of the other Paladins. For the Warlock, you could use, uh, or for the Mage, you could use uh, Jaina. Or I like how you were going to say Warlock, and then you're like, oh shit, I can't <laughs> think of any other Warlocks. I can't think of any other <laughs> Warlocks. <laughs> Uh, for the warrior, I mean, I would, I, I, I'll never play the warrior class because I don't want to have to look at garage every time I play. You know. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I mean, that's just part of the custom ability. I think right now I'm definitely going to play it. I want to, play it, but I feel like they're really missing the custom ability of making your decks your own, which is how come their card needs are slow, but they give you such free reign of what you can possibly do with it. Well, I mean, keep in mind, this is, this like, game oh. is being made by Team 5, and Team 5 is only 15 developers strong. So, yeah. uh, I mean, if enough people say in the bait, or maybe, oh, we'd like to change the, like, could we have more yeah. heroes? Like, I mean, yeah. all it would really need is some new art and voice acting, surely, because you'd keep the stats the same for balance yeah, purposes, no, but, yeah, like, if you wanted Varian uh, instead of Garrosh like it should be simple enough yeah you know without uh, beta is coming out in summer so beta is going to be beta and like all things has to be developed over time so right so if blizzard listens to this pay attention you should do that it's a good idea well i mean i'm sure like if i get into the bayer and i'm sure fingers crossed i will uh we'll, like we'll, we'll, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get in um <laughs> yeah that's definitely something i'd say like even if like when you first start the game, or when you make a deck, when you go to make a deck, because you can have more than one deck, you can make a deck for yeah. each of the things if you want. But like when you make a deck, if it gives you the option of being alliance or horde, just so you get characters that are relevant to your faction of choice. Exactly. Um, like I don't care if the bend rule to make certain people in the lore certain classes. Like if you want to go ahead and follow Sylvanas the Hunter, go for it. But just, I want to be Sylvanas. So whatever you have to do to make that happen, do it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew that was the, the, the end game of your argument. You wanted to be yeah. Sylvanas. To <laughs> make Sylvanas play. Well, I mean, uh, well, here's, here's the thing. I mean, it's probably possible, but I mean, if it really... I don't know if it's really going to matter, you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day... Um... That, that may be your, your hero or whatever, but... I mean, the they always have the ability to add more. Yeah. Well, uh, there's I another tidbit so. of information. Um, the game will ship with 300 cards. Uh, they plan to add new cards. Uh, like, there's different tiers of cards, like, using, like, the WoW gear writing system. So that evolve Archimonde to kill Jaden at what level 26. What you can do is, like, it happened in the Warlock Druid game. Uh, the Warlock got enough mana to do, play the Jaraxxus card, and the and Jaraxxus killed uh, Gul'dan, and then the hero was replaced with Jaraxxus. Uh, that's awesome. And, like, okay, well, played... that just goes into our point, where the hero that you have doesn't isn't necessarily, mm. you know, bound to you. Like, you could have a replacement. In, in certain it, uh, situations, I it guess. like it played the uh, like the you face your axis sound clip and everything it is pretty <laughs> badass. Um, I don't know. I think that's at this point all we can say about Hearthstone. But how about Blizzard? Well, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, there's more. Hold if on. you've got more. No, I'm just saying that we will definitely be focusing a lot on this on on my YouTube channel when it you know when the beta comes out. And uh, no doubt there will be a big tournament between, uh, at the very minimal, the the, uh, the 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 TS gamer crew, right? Like the staff, um, you know, Snapple, Dunn, Howie, me. We're gonna make Yours. Necro do it as well, you know. And then uh, I, I I don't know. I may I may put out some feelers and see if if you know. Maybe uh, Jesse wants to come play in this tournament. Maybe try and convince TV to come play. You know, we'll have a big, nice little tournament go down. You never know. 
and I mean that it goes without saying. I mean, I already play some games sometimes with uh, listeners. Uh, me and Tyranor, for example, have played Blood Bowl in the past. Uh, I mean, a me and Harry are in a RPG with Tyranor Dolk. Uh, they're all listeners, so like, if you get into the bay and you want to play with us. I don't know. It all depends on our availability. If we're like trying to film or something, but if we're free, we'll we'll play a game. If it's a good game, it might end up on the channel, so you can be e famous. <laughs> e famous, indeed. indeed. Um, but yes, e famous. Yes, let's talk about Blizzard. Or, uh, I, I keep wanting Blizzard to call it Blizzard also. Dota. Keep wanting to call it Blizzard Dota, and it's really. I think, all right, so here's the deal. Number one, when this game was, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll start into it. When Blizzard All-Stars was originally announced two years ago at BlizzCon, it was called Blizzard Dota. And then... And it was going to be an arcade thing for uh, Heart the Spawn. Right, right. And then Valve was like, oh, but here's our new game, Dota 2. And then Blizzard was like, you can't trademark Dota, bro. That's... Like, it's us. It's on our Warcraft 3, man. And then Valve was like, but you didn't trademark it. And Blizzard was like, we didn't think we had to. And then Valve was like, well, you should have. And then there was a, there was a, I, I don't want to say there was a legal thing, because neither company ever sued the other company, right? Like, well, it was settled, wasn't it? But, uh... It was, uh, basically, at the end of the day, um... Blizzard and Valve reached an agreement, and as part of that agreement, Blizzard had to change the name of Blizzard Dota to Blizzard All-Stars. However, I think there's a little bit of a stab back, as I made a note earlier, that now that that happened, the, the new book series that came out is called Dawn of the Aspects, and if you, you know, take that down into abbreviation, it's Dota. Dota 1 and 2? <laughs> Dota 1 <laughs> and 3 and 4 and 5. Um, but I don't know. The, the point is, Blizzard All-Stars is what has come out of this whole deal. Um, I don't know what the fuck Blizzard got out of their legal agreement with Valve uh, over Dota, I but... think that, like, because Blizzard's whole deal was that Dota belonged to the Warcraft community, because a member of the Warcraft community, uh, made the first Dota. Ice Frog, wasn't it? So I think Ice I Frog think, made Dota All Stars. Oh, I don't even I don't even know anymore. I'm still confused about the Dawn of the Aspects <laughs> Two conversation. So uh, yeah, I think Blizzard enough. like can still use the term Dota and or like the community can still use the word Dota and I don't even I don't know. Fair enough. Um. So anyways, yeah, Dota Dota All Stars is like or Blizzard All Stars. Is, uh, you know, the Dota All Stars equivalent that Blizzard themselves are bringing out. Although, it's much different than Dota in the sense that, uh, it honestly is kind of designed to be a bit more like League of Legends, I feel. Um, where there isn't just the one boss, right? I forget what his name is. I know what well, it's called Kongor. No. In Dota, it's called, uh,. You mean lol? No, I'm talking about Dota. Oh, okay. Like, okay, the, the big boss, when Dota. you play, yeah, the original Dota, there's a big boss in sort of the mid, or sort of the middle of the map. Uh, I know in Han, it's it's called Kongor, I forget what it's called in Dota. Um, I'm sure someone in IRC will tell me, though. R there you go, see? Thargaros is on top of it. Roshan. Roshan has fallen to the dire. But, uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day... Uh, League of Legends has, um, like... Baron. Yeah, but it also has another, like, smaller boss on the other Dragons side. and then, uh... Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, like... And with the... From the last time I looked at, at Blizzard All-Stars, they had these, uh, little jungle camps, and when you killed them, then... They spawned in the lane and helped push your lane or something along those lines. It was kind of weird, and it seemed the design seemed to be more uh, of a uh, cartoonish sort of more casual approach, like League of Legends, you know, rather than the original Dota 
or Dota 2 or Heroes of New Earth, which are, you know, aimed to be a lot more competitive, a little bit harder um, of a game, you know what I mean? Like, uh, the learning curve is a little bit more difficult in Han and Dota and Dota 2 than it is League of Legends. See, like, what I've seen from Blizzard All-Stars, I'm, in my head, I relate more to Smite. Like, the, the focus seems like they want quick games. Yeah. That as well. Um, I guess the biggest thing, though, is uh, at the end of the day, you know, I'm excited for both of these games. I'm excited for both Dota All-Star, or, God damn it, Blizzard All-Stars. Blizzard All-Stars. And, uh, and, uh, Hearthstone, but, um, I don't know, like, we were all expecting Blizzard All-Stars today at PAX East, and, uh, we got Hearthstone instead, and I can't say that I'm all too sad about it, you know what I mean? Well, I was annoyed initially, and then I was like, actually, like, when I saw it, the more I saw of it, I was like, actually, this... This looks like it could be fun. So, I mean, it could have been Diablo three for Xbox. So, I mean, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> Blizzard has now partnered with Microsoft to release Diablo three on the Xbox three hundred and sixty. <laughs> That's my other question. If you're gonna release a console game, why the fuck would you do it on an inferior system like the PlayStation? You know, oh, like shit. why not? Why not? Why not bring it to uh, you know a popular or not a popular, not even that a proper gaming console like the 360? You know, you might as well had released the game on the fucking Wii. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, if they make it, ex- if they make it exclusive for Sony. I'm gonna be like, that was a bad move because you should never make it exclusive for anything. Put it on all of them. <laughs> I'm sure they'll all. I'm sure they'll all take it and accept it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying that uh, they should have gone with the uh, 360. What difference does it make to you? Mm. You already have it on PC. Furthermore, you don't play it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you care? I, pl- I played Diablo 3 for like a uh, month. You played Diablo 3. You played it for two <laughs> days. I don't know, I- I would probably, be- I'll probably rebuy it if it comes out for the next gen consoles. I mean, I, because... I played it, I beat the game, and then I was done with it. Like, what do you want me to do? You didn't beat the game, you finished the first act. <laughs> I beat the story on, uh, on whatever the first thing was, and I didn't, why it, I don't get that. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, I must play it on all 17 difficulties That's to get 100% completion. But why? That's boring as fuck. I already know what happens in the story. I don't want to do this again. And it'd be harder. I have better things to do with my life than play the I same mean, game twice, but I it'd mean, be shit, harder. I mean, we were playing with Sarah, so it was hard enough the first time. No shit. <laughs> I, was saying, I, was, I broke off and did it with my own group. <laughs> How we got lucky. But, I mean, the, the deal is this, right? Like, I was, I'm excited for Blizzard... All Stars. I'm really excited for it, as I I do like MOBAs. I mean, I play Smite, I play Han, I play Dota 2. I don't play League of Legends, because, you know, I like good games. Because that game's for little girls. (laughs) But, um, you know... (laughs) All the YouTube comments. Maybe Pride will be the only one this week. Every time time I mention that I don't like League of Legends, people hate on me, and that's fine. You know, I mean, I'll fight the good fight, like I always do. But, I can uh, always bitch about Ronin again. Yeah. People will start hating me more. Uh... Ronin sucks. <laughs> I'm gonna keep flying. But anyways, the point is, the point is that uh, I'm not at all saddened by the announcement of Hearthstone, and I'm actually very. I I, I would actually say I'm a little bit more excited about Hearthstone than I am uh, Blizzard All Stars. I'm gonna point. agree with you with that. Because, I mean, how many MOBAs are in existence that, I mean, we all play? Like you said, you listed, like, two of them you play. I play two of them. So, I mean, another MOBA to add. No, three of them, actually. So, another MOBA to add to my gaming repertoire isn't really a big deal for me. But trading card game, I haven't done one of those in a long time. Right. So, I mean, I'm excited. 
Plus, I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at all the different videos I can make, and all I see is money, money. Yeah, yeah. And money, <laughs> money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, uh, I, I mean, it's gonna be. It looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun, and uh, I can spend a lot of time, um, especially because uh, it doesn't seem so graphically intensive. And a lot of the reasons I can't do a lot of videos on other other systems is just my PC isn't that great anymore. Uh, but I have to make it last for uh, another year, or so uh, about another year, a little less than a year, before I uh, my budget will allow me to buy a new computer. At least the one that I want, one that is going to last me a little bit longer than this one did. This one's lasting me a good while, though. Lasted me about five years, so I can't complain too much. It's just it's got to the point where I can't upgrade it any further without breaking things. I mean, graphically, so, it's probably going to the PC and the iPad are probably going to be graphically almost the same. So if you can, right, you can run right. an iPad game on your computer, then you're set. All right. Um. I mean, my, my, my computer will still run WoW at Ultra, just not at a very high frame rate, but I mean, like, it's playable. So I have no... You don't no have to run it on issues. Ultra, you know. No, I know, I'm just saying. And I generally don't, I'm just saying it can, it has the ability to. Um, but this game looks like it, it'll be a lot of fun, and, and the biggest thing with that is that it makes um, putting out videos a lot quicker whenever a game is isn't so intensive because uh you get a lot of uh corrupted frames and stuff like that that you have to go and fix so well, i mean we all know about that because of the dun and how we do dominance point dallies there were we had loads of issues with those videos yeah. uh i don't i'm not even sure if we even finished that series because like the last video was corrupt and we were like fuck it and how he was like <laughs> i will do it by myself and then that didn't work either so yeah, cause the exact same video got corrupted. <laughs> the same point. The exact same part got corrupted when I tried to remake it. I was like, well, I'm done. Two characters is enough. Yeah. Uh, uh, but fucking, anyways, um, with that but said, like, uh, I'm... Before we go on, uh, like real quick, uh, the car game matches seem to be like, what, five, ten minutes tops to do a game, so... I don't know, you watched it. Well, I, I know I posed that as like a question. It's not, it's a statement. So, uh, it, it's just like a nice little game that you can play. It's not going to cost you any money unless you get into buying the cards, which I probably will. And, yeah. uh, just make short little videos. Uh, people don't watch videos all the way through, so I think they can usually manage like a five minute video, see what goes on. We'll probably will become like the husky of. I am, dude. I'm going to, I'm going to cast the shit out of some fucking Hearthstone, man. I'm gonna cast the shit out of some hearts, so. He's summoned Jaraxxus. You have summoned Jaraxxus. But, um. You need anyways. to get started on your, uh, on your, like, tagline. No, so you got a good one. <laughs> H to the husky, husky. Uh. Doesn't work with pride. P to the ride, pride, yo. That's horrible. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> That needs like evaluation. You, no, I guess you what you're trying to say it. is we need a break. You should. Is what you, you wanted to say like it. ten minutes ago. Do you no, want me to cast just, it? No. You, yeah, you should cast it, and your tagline can be "You're finished." So it's like, done. You're finished. <laughs> Easy peasy. Easy. See, look, I'm a marketing genius. We'll stick that at the end. Now all we have to do is teach you proper English. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <I'm in> English. <laughs> uh, anyways, done. You have the password for the emails and stuff. I do. Um, What's 11? Huh? 11. Well, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. 11. Ele oh, 11? Okay, 11. whatever. <laughs> um, in the meantime... Um, done why don't you fire that up and and officially read uh, your email or you can uh, do one of the IRC questions that you had do we not uh, need a break so that... we no we don't need a break. break we don't need we don't need no break so why do we take breaks if we don't need no breaks I am gonna read like my first email question because I'm excited so talk amongst yourself while I log in actually no I will give you an IRC question to read and then talk amongst yourself I will read you a question. 
this question. What we got? Uh, okay, here's what you can talk about while I'm logging in. Uh, Greenbrook asks, Good evening, Law Gang. With 5.3 being the next filler patch to lead up to the invasion of Orgrimmar, what are your predictions for the next patch? How do we get to that inevitable confrontation? Theorycraft! Okay, I didn't hear anything you just said because I was... I'm pretty sure the basic summary of that question is what do we think is going to be the next patch that leads us into uh, the Orgrimmar raid? I have no idea because I don't play WoW anymore. <laughs> so, I mean, we started off with something that we thought would lead us into it, which is the uh, Alliance or the landing on Pandaria kind of fighting. Then we went away from that to go to the, Th the Thunder King. The Thunder King. There's, there's not going to be one more... And then there's going to be the last one, right? Is that how it's coming out, Dub? Uh, yeah, uh, 5.4 is Orgrimmar. Then might yeah, be so 5.5. I mean, but the next the one question is, is, uh, is 5.3 that yeah, leads us into the Orgrimmar. It's going to be a filler patch. So there's not going to be any dungeons. Uh, there's not going to be any raid. It's going to be new dailies and quests and shit. So, what's happening? Well, it's going to be oh, back on Azeroth because Dave Kosick said we're done on Pandaria. So, I'm kind of curious as to where exactly that's going to be. I'm wondering if they're going to make a new zone or just like phase us until, you know, MOP is over or something. I don't know how they were going to work that. Well, there's still some places in Azeroth that we can't reach. They're very that's tiny, true. but they do exist still. As men, as, I actually argue about this all the time with people. They're like, no, we have everything on us. No, there are still tiny places. Look at a map, try and fly over some places you can't. So I mean, it's just a matter of whether or not they change location, or if they add us, one, if they give us one of those new areas. But I mean, it's gonna. Be, I mean, I didn't hear about that Azeroth thing, so I mean, that's what that was news to me. I thought it was gonna be something on Pandaria again, or moving more into Pandaria. Uh, so, I, I'm gonna I, go find the tweet because I'm pretty sure that's what he said. Dude, just to in confirm. The while you're finding that, I mean. Well, I need you to stall anyway because I'm logging into this uh, to the same account, and it says I see you're logging in from a very different IP. You will need to verify that it is you. <laughs> so uh, I need to answer the security question. So. What, what is the security yeah. question? Uh, I will copy paste it. it. Sounds it sounds like a Skype conversation that we should have, that you guys should have in text. <laughs> well, he is, <laughs> but I asked him what's the question. What is the real name of the producer? See, I didn't want to say that out loud because now people are going to be like, fuck it, I'm just going to hacksaw all the pride shit. They they couldn't, it's not even the same, like, we give out the email address, lordomfg.fm, but that's not even where the emails go when you email that. It's just an email forward. They'll find a way. This, this is sure the internet. Are you guys... Very... Don't they have yourself a real name of the, real name, I, I, okay, I think it's, uh... I think it's that. Ah. Because it's the producer, I think, is referencing Blondie, but I, I don't know for sure. I may have to call Blondie in Sweden and be like, yo. That's it. I, I can't mean, get it. <laughs> oh, you got it? Okay. okay. Good. I, I, keep, keep, uh, keep. And yes, keep someone has found my phone number. It's actually not very hard to find, and I still haven't changed how he found it. But, was it uh, Google? Yeah. It was Google. No, no. It wasn't Google. You uh, you would have to know a little bit about how the internet works to get my phone. <laughs> <laughs> the well, the internet's just fucking I got a phone number pretty easily. Huh? Well, how it's your how you you I gave you my phone number, so of course exactly. you know my number. <laughs> and if I need you for whatever reason, I text Howie. I'm like, Yo, call cool Pride. <laughs> Uh we got fifteen minutes. Let's let's get a uh, let's get a fucking question going. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> talking about from uh, oh, this is actually Vandalia. Okay, I just clicked it. Uh, I have to work tonight on March twenty second, twenty thirteen. So I'm sending an email since I can't IRC questions today. I know game balance wise this can't happen, but I was wondering if any of the six or seven races of the horde were like screw you or screw you, Warchief went over to the Alliance to join the Alliance, would the Alliance let the race join, and what would they have to do to join? 
And to be fair, I guess if any of the Alliance Rises for some reason actually wanted to join the Horde, would they let them join and what would they have to do? And for a follow-up to that, for the Alliance Law people, Pride and New Guy, I think, <laughs> what oh, Horde you. race would you want to be on the Alliance and for the Horde Law people, Dun and how it's it, what Alliance races would you like to be on the Horde? Okay, number one. Wow, <laughs> <Our> fucking names. <clears throat> number one, um, I would like or if if a horde member wanted to join the alliance, they probably would be allowed to join. As we saw with the blood elves, who were very close to joining the alliance once again. So they would probably be able to rejoin the alliance. I'm sure, no problem. Uh, if the alliance could, you know, benefit from them joining. Now. On the other side, I don't think that the Horde would allow any current Alliance races to join the Horde, aside from possibly the Worgen, because uh, of their proximity to... Uh, or basically so that at that point in time, the Horde would control the entirety of the Northern, e Northern Eastern Kingdoms and the entire continent of uh, Lordaeron. Indeed. But even then, so, I don't think they'll let him join. Yeah. I don't think he's um, very friendly with him. Yeah. Uh, on the other side, the, the other end of that question, um, I would say if, if, I, if there was any horde race that I wanted to be in the Alliance, I would say the Trolls. I picked the Torn. Uh, I like those guys. Shit, who do I want for the horde? Part of me wants to say, <clears throat> I would want the gnomes just to fuck with pride. Hey, hey! I take no. the gnomes. Fuck you! <laughs> no, actually, I would probably. I don't. I don't really want any of them. Well, see, that's the my gnomes problem. are a good I don't really choice. Want any of them. Nah, but we have goblins like the orc version of gnomes. I know, but then you'd be doubly, like, scientifically powerful. You'd have both gnomish and goblin engineering then. Okay, I changed my vote from torrent to goblins. <laughs> <laughs> you can take strategy. Them. See, and that that all falls into strategy. That's why the alliance is better because we use our superior intellect to strategically put you ourselves your, in the best you position. Use your, you pay for the you, goblins, though? You use your strategic intellect to copy my idea? No. <laughs> superior you superior intellect to strategically place ourselves in the best position, Done. Let's get that right. All right? If you're going to use my own yep. argument against me, let's get at least get it right, Done. All right? It you can do this. It the fact that I was the one... I don't even want the Yeah, but your thing. your idea was to just to fuck with me. That was that not because you would have both gnomish and uh, goblin engineering. You had didn't even think of that. That was after I had said that. Your well, whole thought process was funny. I'll take the gnomes because it would piss pride off. See, that's so hordish and thuggish of you to do. See, that's why Agreed. you're horde and I'm alliance because while it's yeah, that may, you know, tick someone off and enrage them. But the only thing, but you're just taking the gnomes and you're gonna put them in a little place somewhere and they're just gonna sit back and relax and do whatever they want. While it's on our like side, on the, the alliances moment, side, oh, bullshit. The gnomes are thinking of mas machines and 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 these little trinkets and and all these other ideas. They're building them. They're engineering things to fucking wipe the horde off the face of Azeroth as it should be. Okay. As the Titans okay, intended. Mister, I'll take the trolls and I'll take the Torrent. I picked goblins. Uh, did you hear? You I changed you, my vote. You, you, <laughs> was it? If you take After the goblins, the you guys can't afford them. I, I well, you didn't even hear why I. No, you didn't even know why I would this. take the trolls. Yes, he did. <laughs> he, no, he didn't. Thrall was like, I helped you out, so now you're in the now you're in the core, and he like anointed them with oil and stuff, and that was it. That's how we do things. That is our form of currency. Well, <laughs> no, <he's a> <laughs> when, when Garrosh yeah. when Garrosh killed uh, what's his name? Anointed with oils. Just saying. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That, that's that how is we do a good things. point. 
<laughs> Although he did kind of like cheat, even though he didn't know it. <laughs> I would take in Morgan, just so we could lull them into a false sense of security and then kill them off. See, this is the problem with you, Horty. You guys just want to kill off your allies or right. like just stick them in a corner. We're like, we're gonna actually use them to our benefit. <laughs> Turn on, yeah. um. Um, oh, they're, they're, they're on their yeah. own. They're the ones that aren't doing anything. We're not regulating them to nothing. They're just like, oh, we're going to fix our spaceship. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, that. Sorry about that. Don't know what kind Grant of... would be the last one I want. No one wants them. Let's be no, honest. No, we see, we also use them to our advantage, too. It's called cannon fodder. <laughs> that that would be Here's a very question. valid point if they ever showed up anywhere. If you had to give away one... Well, race, they're not showing be... up because they're stuck in little cannons. If you had to give away a race to the other crash, it would it be? Uh, if we had to give away a race. Yeah, like if you had to give a race away and kick them out. <laughs> you can have one. the Draenei. Don't want the Draenei. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Take them. Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> They're all, all yours. Right. All, that, all of us are good though. Anyways. Alright, we need a oh, new good. question. Okay, a new do you question. want IRC or email? It doesn't matter. It's up to you. It's your show. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, from Love's Cox, uh, two questions. Uh, how does the Church of Light feel about the Naru, and vice versa? And also, he's linked the uh, the Mogu female model, which I'm going to post in the IRC for those who haven't seen it, with the question, would you tap that? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm, not, it, I'm, I'm, I'm allowing it. I'd tap it I with like my giant not... rune totem. That's not a fair question for me, so I'll just abstain from answering. Okay, for you, how about you can supplement Mogu female with Lei Shen? <laughs> no. Then the answer is no. <laughs> but he has thunder power. Uh, I I'll don't put know. A little spark the in Naru. your eye. I don't know what the Naru <laughs> and the Ch Church of Light. I don't know what their relationship is, so I'm not going to answer that bit. I'm going to leave that to people who actually care about the Church of Light. Alright, what's the legitimate question? Not the, would I tap that? What's the legitimate question? Uh, what is, what is the view of the Church of Light, Church of the Light and on the Naru and vice versa? I think they coexist peacefully. They both worship the same thing. More or less. Yeah, it's just how they get the light. I don't think there's a conflict at all. Yeah. As for like, the non-serious question, uh, like these these Mogu are clearly meant to be the new Eridar twins, but their face is kind of pig-like, for lack of a better word. So I'm gonna have to decline. They're also made out of stone. They're made out of stone, which I think would cause logistical problems. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, that, there's a point. Am I meant to delete the emails once I've read them out? Yes. Okay. Next question done. Uh, let's go to the email. Uh, hey, but where there's law crew, I was wondering if there's any law surrounding King Rastakhan and Zolt the Prophet. Rastakhan. Uh, is I there anything know. about Rastakhan? I think there is actually. Uh, in in the on Thunder Island, when you kill trolls, and there are many a troll in the first area and the second area, actually, uh, there's a chance to drop. Uh, books like Zandalari there's like the wet Zandalari book which is about how uh, the island is sinking and the bloodied book and I'm sure one of them definitely talks about Zul but might also talk about Rastakhan uh, I might read them one of the days uh, I've got a couple of them on my warlock actually I've got the waterlogged not the wet book the waterlogged book uh, the bloody book, and I think I've got a third one somewhere. I'll, I will gather them all eventually, and I will read them, perhaps. So, uh, to, in answer to your question, Anton, uh, maybe. I think there is, but you're going to have to go do your dailies and find out for yourself. Let's leave it at that. Uh... Unless anyone, Necro, you are more proactive with the dailies than I am. Have you gathered any of these and know anything off the top of your head? 
I have, but I don't remember if they talk about Zul or Rastakhan. I think the only thing they mention, like, in the context of 5.2 is they talk more about how Zandalar isn't destroyed, it's just sinking still, so we have to assume that both of them are still around and kicking. I think oh that's god. about it. Oh god. Oh god, but... Reddit is down. Oh uh, no... Okay, alright, uh, uh, real quick question from Dark Dude 108, 103, sorry, is asking for WrestleMania predictions. Uh, are we doing the annual WrestleMania prediction contest internally? Like last year, didn't we do it online and watched WrestleMania with fans on streams? When's WrestleMania? Uh, Pride no, is to destroy. April 8th or 7th? Uh, it's so April 7th. April 7th. Uh, yes. Are we doing predictions then? Or do you want to do predictions now? I don't even want, know the card. You want to do predictions? Let me look up the card. Oh, okay, you look up the card and I will look at a different... I'll ask a different law question in the meantime. Uh, Paul Adin. Hey, Dun. Love listening to the whole but why there's law crew and best of luck to Pride on his breakaway. I just wanted to ask about what major deaths you could see in the future. Like, for an example... Would you see Barry and Diane at some point, or any of the other racial leaders, and what way would you expect, or like to see, these deaths occur? Also, who do you think would be the successor in this, in these cases? And that was from uh, Paul Ladin, if I didn't say. Ah, uh, ooh, fuck. Fuck. Um, mm. in the near future, I could see maybe... Now I have argued ever since Pandora came out that nowhere has it nowhere did Blizzard say that we were going to kill Garrosh. He is going to be defeated. It was never said that we're going to kill Garrosh, but actually I can probably see a Garrosh death as being the most likely. And I would like to see him replaced with Sarfang. Farak Sarfang. But uh that probably will not be the case. As for how he will die. I'd really like it to for Vol'jin to like act out his like what he said he'd do. Not only because like oh, what the fuck Is, have we lost the call? What's oh. going on? No. Okay, yeah, I've got I've got. There's a problem with this call pop up on Skype, so I don't know maybe how he's having trouble. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see uh, Vol'jin do it with the. What was the arrow in the back or knife in the back or whatever? And not because I want... I like Vol'jin and I think he's... Well, I do like Vol'jin, but not for... I don't want to see it for Vol'jin's sake. I want to see it to take the kill away from the Alliance. Oh, you dick. I want Jaina to do it. She fucking deserves to kill that bastard. What did, he, what, did he, what did he actually do to Vol'jin? He's just like, oh, you, you trolls are stinky. And that's about it. Well, other than have, trying to have him assassinated... <laughs> eh, whatever. I like Jaina more, so I don't care about him. No one likes Jaina. <laughs> I don't even like Jaina. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I like you, Jaina. Thumbs up. <laughs> I don't know. I would say that, uh... I don't know. I don't really care. To be completely <laughs> honest. I just want the guy to die. Garrosh. Yes. But Garrosh will live on in Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft, so it's okay. <laughs> As the unrightful representation of a warrior hero. Can you think of a better warrior? Lothar. Did you say Lothar? Yes, I did. Lothar the Paladin. Lothar the Warrior. Oh, oh, Lothar the uh, fucking... Not King. Torelli and Lothar. I have a better one for Warrior. Okay. Before we get into all that, if we're going to do these WrestleMania prediction things, we need to do it now. Because we're already about to run over. Well, are we doing it now or are we doing it close to the time? Yeah, let's, let's do it now. Close to the time? Wow. Okay, what? what's... Let's okay, do it what, now. what's the card? Alright, first match. The Rock versus John Cena, WWE Championship. I'm going John Cena. Uh... Probably Cena. But that, the rock. 
That might be my go against Savriel match. <laughs> uh, Undertaker versus CM Punk. I'm going for Undertaker. I'm torn. I really CM Punk. I want CM Punk to win, but I think Undertaker will win. Is there, there just which one, Undertaker or Punk? God damn. Fuck Weird. it, I'm going Punk. He's never let me down. Yeah. Apart from my like, last pay-per-view. <laughs> the last two pay-per-views. The last one, yeah. <laughs> uh, Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. I'm putting Triple oh. H over. Uh, Triple yeah, H. Triple H, I'd say, but I don't really care about that. Maybe I'll get Serial then. Alberto Del Rio Almost versus here. Jack Swagger. I'm going uh, Del Rio over. Isn't Jack Swagger really hot with the WWE at the moment? I'm going Swagger. He was, going but Swagger. then he got arrested for marijuana abuse. Ah. Uh, don't care, uh, Swagger. He has got Swagger. That's what <laughs> And these yeah, other ones, I don't even know if they're actually matches that are going to happen, but uh, Ryback versus Mark Henry? What? That, <laughs> that's my serial match. Uh, <laughs> I'm going with uh, Mark Henry winning that one. I'm going to go with Ryback. Uh, Jericho versus Ziggler. Oh, come on, it's got to be Jericho. Jericho. I'm going with Ziggler. Fuck Randy Ziggler. Orton, Sheamus, and The Big Show versus The Shield. I'm going with The Shield. Uh, going I'm going Sheamus with Sheamus team. Yeah, the, the WWE team, like Sheamus and etc. Team Hell No versus the Primetime Players. Going it's Team Hell Team No. Hell no. Yep. Uh, Wade Barrett versus Bo Dallas. Going Wade Who? Barrett. The fuck is Bo Dallas? Bo Dallas know, like, is that like... dude who came into the he won NXT tournament and entered into the oh, Royal yeah. Rumble oh, and probably pissed off Wade Barrett. Um, and, and the last one is uh, Antonio Cesaro versus The Miz for the U.S. Championship. I'm going with uh, Antonio Cesaro. I had that guy. So the, the Miz. Swede. The Miz. Yeah. Where is the Divas match? Uh, there isn't one apparently, but there I'm sure no. there will be, but there isn't one on That's the card bullshit. at this that moment in time. Um, so I don't know, and that could be uh, that. Like I said, that that card was posted on the fifth, so you know it could have changed. It could very now. well change and change in the future. Yeah, um, so we'll, we'll we'll do a, an actual prediction, like when we know what the actual. 100% for sure card is. But uh, anyways... Have we, got, have we got time for one real quick one? Someone's asking uh, if Pride, no, Pride's taking some time off. Can we expect a more Horde-centric topics and a lot more Alliance bashing? No, uh, that's maybe. why I hired Necro. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, we'll see. No, I, I don't intend... Well, what? Maybe a little. Maybe a little bit of Horde. Maybe. We don't know. Although we don't intend it, I'm sure it will come up. Yeah. Why is Snapple in the call all of a sudden? Uh, because the... Snapple shows up right at the end and then he's like, yo, let's play Smite or something like that. Um, no, in all I honesty, I might, uh, I might use this opportunity with Pride not being here because he hasn't played Heart of the Swarm yet to do the like, the the StarCraft episode because we said that we do that back when we were doing But Wait, there's Lord Diablo, so <laughs> uh, we might do that during the, like, Pride's off for definitely two weeks. Maybe more, depending on when he gets probably, sold. Probably, probably more. Probably closer to a month, month and a half. So, uh, uh, we will. We'll, there'll still be Warcraft lore, but I might use the opportunity to do some different things just to keep you all on your toes as well. So, and, and just to just to clarify for those like listening, not I'm not like I'm just not doing. But wait, there's lore. Like I'm still doing YouTube videos and stuff. Just not believe there's lore for a couple weeks. I'm taking it. Because look, like, uh, other than the very first season, we've never had Boy there's lore on in the spring. So. That's my excuse. I'm just, you know, staying with tradition and not doing the show in the spring. Okay, to. There <laughs> might be lore. There might be lore, but there will definitely be a show at this time during the break. Uh, whether I decide to do a law show or talk about something completely different, who knows? But we'll ha we'll all have some fun, and 
they'll, they'll always be law. They'll always be like Q&As and people will always ask me Warcraft questions and I will always answer them. So that's, that's what we're going to do. Cool shit. Well, it's been fun, guys, but uh, we are well past our allotted time slot by almost seven minutes. So, that's it for us this week. Be sure to tune in next week uh, for more. But wait, there's a little right here on Nordrasil Radio at nordrasilradio.com. <laughs>